Hey everyone. So a little different today. I'm going to kind of mix it up. Um, I am going to do kind of a bike fit experiment later. I do have some things I have to do this morning though. Uh, right now I just dropped kids off at school and headed actually to a meeting I have to take with uh, one of the doctors in town. Yeah, and then we'll head to the studio and, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. So here's the basic plan. This is not my bike. I've mentioned that in the past. It's just one of the floor bikes that I have that I'm getting rid of. It's just the one that is close to my size. So when I need something to ride or I need something to show on video, it's usually the one I grab. And <clears throat> kind of what I've done is the, pa the past number of videos is I've made adjustments to it to make a point about, about you know, some aspect of fitting. And in doing so, I've completely taken it out and it, I just noticed the other day that it really doesn't fit me very well anymore. There's just the position of it. What I'm gonna try is I'm gonna go out and ride and make some adjustments based on feel. And then we'll come back in here and I'm gonna hook myself up to the infrared motion capture and some of the saddle pressure. And we're gonna see what changes that it recommends that I couldn't necessarily feel or, you know, and see how, basically see how close I get going by feel. So, um, yeah. Let's uh, let's see. I'm gonna go out, ride, make some changes based on feel, and see where it gets me. <clears throat> okay, I've been riding about 20 minutes or so. Stopped here. Kind of gotten a feel for the bike. It feels like, well, let me show you a couple of things. Um, so of course I had this zero setback seat post on here and it really feels like um, I'm just too far forward on the bike. I feel like I'm kind of tipping forward all the time. And I feel like the bar position here is just a little bit low. Now I don't know if that's because I'm tipping forward and I just don't have my hips in the right place, but it's also making my overall saddle height just feel really high. So instead of lowering the saddle first, I'm actually gonna move the saddle back and it might raise the bars up a little bit. And then we'll see about the, uh, we'll see about the saddle height, I might change that later. Sometimes instead of having a multi-tool, I just like to take a five and a four with me. I just tuck it under waistband. That way it's right there and I want to grab it. All right, let's try this out. like the seat now is tipping me down so I'm gonna nose it up just a little bit and then keep going.
Okay, one thing I should note as I'm putting these reflectors on here, um, when I was out riding, I did feel like there were a, there was another change I wanted to make. I couldn't quite decide which direction, but I, I couldn't. I didn't know if I wanted to move the saddle back further, and to do that, I would need a setback seat post uh, to in order to make that happen. Or I couldn't decide if I just wanted the stem to be longer. Um, it was. I just felt like I was still a little bit scrunched. I felt like I wanted to stretch out a little bit more. My inkling is that I wanted to move the, the saddle back a little further, but um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the infrared here says, and that will. Maybe I'm wrong about both of those. Not sure. So we'll see. Okay, so I took that first round of data. Now I'm just going to take a look at the saddle pressure and at the infrared. We'll see what it says. Okay, so here is the first recording. This takes some kind of lower quality video um, as well, but this is just, and these four boxes over here are just showing that the, the LEDs, or excuse me, that the dots that it can see. So that's just for the recording phase. So we'll pull that off of there. And here's what, uh, what I look like on the bike moving around. You can see hips moving quite a bit. Kind of fish tailing through the back. Let's let's dig into the numbers a little bit and see what's going on here. So I'm going to stop here. All right. So just looking over here at the at the numerics table, it kind of gives us the broad strokes. And the first thing I always look at, and this is pretty glaring right here, is this knee flexion extension. So my extension here, I'm moving to 143 on the left, but 151 on the right. That's a that's problematic. That's a that's a big difference. There's first of all, there's a seven to eight degree difference between the knees and in how they're extending, which isn't terribly uncommon. But seven to eight degrees is getting up there for sure. Um, a couple of degrees is is fairly typical. But um, and the other problem is that the right knee is extending at 151. That means it's it's only 29 degrees from full extension, and that really should be 35, 40 degrees or so. So. It, this definitely reinforces that what I was thinking was going on and, and wasn't 100% sure of though by feel is that my saddle definitely is too high. It's causing me to uh, really be stretching on that right side. And this difference is kind of, it shows up in a couple, this difference is kind of, it shows up in a couple other areas. So if we go to the saddle pressure, which is right here, you can see my, the, the black squeal ends are kind of all over the place, pretty erratic and a lot of movement over to this left side. Um, yeah, kind of kind of all over the place. Got to have some pressure up in the in the middle of the saddle here. Um, and this amount, the red line is kind of indicative of the magnitude of movement of the pelvis. And that's that's a that's a lot of movement. That's I'm, I'm moving. I generally don't I'm usually pretty stable. So that kind of reinforces that uh, that I'm kind of off kilter here. And it also shows me that I am sitting kind of skewed here. I'm sitting off to the left a little bit more. That's why more of this red line is over here. And um, that's why more of that movement favors that side. If we go back to the numerics table, if we go back to the numerics table too, we can look here at the hip height difference that kind of shows on average, the right hip is definitely sitting higher. And that makes sense if I'm scooted off the left side of the saddle, that would put, you know, if I'm, if I'm off to this left side of the saddle, that's going to put this sit bone right here on top of the saddle more. And it's going to basically put that hip higher up in the air. Um, on average. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of a mess right here. Um, let's dig into some of the numerics tables a little bit. First, we'll just go into, so we can see it, the knee flexion and extension on right and left. Um, and that's, you can see, look at this big difference. This is the right knee straightening. These peaks go much higher. The valleys are roughly the same. I mean, there's not a huge difference, but just the pretty big difference in the in the peaks up here between the right in the orange and the and the left in the green here um let's look at and we're, i'm not going to go through everything let's look at and we're, i'm not going to go through everything i normally would just because that would take a long time um, but let's look here and we'll take a look at my foot movement and yikes yeah my and this is what i was worried about especially when you get sitting skewed on the saddle and the saddle's too high Look at, look at how erratic that is. The red is the right foot and the blue is the left foot. I know it's a different color up here on the on the actual 3D screen. Um, just ignore that. The, the, they have to keep changing colors on the because there's just so many measurements that are available to us. So, um, But look at how erratic that, that uh, right foot down at the... 
it's actually not the bottom of the pedal stroke it's happening at about three o'clock yeah this is these valleys here on the right side are happening about three o'clock which is what we expect but they're really dropping low they're going below zero a couple of times into the negative territory which is not good um, and just look at how erratic it is. So the slope of these lines, you can see how, especially on this right side, when we go from, you know, we're at on this on this right side here, I'm at about three o'clock right there. Okay, three o'clock in the pedal stroke, and that tent, that kind of coincides with the bottom of the peak, uh, excuse me, the valley here um, in the in the foot movement. The, the foot angle I'm looking at here is 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 exactly. This is exactly the, the angle of the foot relative to horizontal. And I'm just about horizontal. I'm actually heeled down maybe a degree or two. Um, but look at the different, look at how weird this looks. It's it's much steeper. The slope is much steeper here. As But look at the different, look at how weird this looks. It's it's much steeper. The slope is much steeper here as I move from three o'clock down to um, six o'clock down here at the bottom of the pedal stroke. And then as I get to the bottom, and move from six o'clock back up to nine o'clock the slope sort of flattens out a little bit it's, it goes steep and then kind of has this little transition and it does that consistently and that tells me that you know the basically that's that the slope is indicative of the the rate of change of that foot posture so i've really vastly you know it's really changing much quicker um through the bottom pedal stroke which it, again, that's not uncommon, but it should be a little more uniform in, in, in this transition from three o'clock up to nine o'clock back here. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of messed up. And just these, how these are so far off here, these valleys, um, my left is in much better position at three o'clock where I'm about nine degrees toe down. So if I were to see if I got a back up here, you can see this foot is towing down a little bit. So All right, so I'm kind of all over the place on the saddle. I think the first, all right, so I'm kind of all over the place on the saddle. I think the first thing I needed to do is um, I need to lower the saddle. That is, I, now that I'm seeing this and I'm getting at least some basic objective data, um, it makes it very clear that I have to do that. So I'm gonna lower the saddle, get myself back up on the bike, reshoot everything and come right back. I'm not gonna show you the recording phase again. You know what that looks like. So I'm just gonna pop right back here in just a second with a new round of data. Hang on. Okay, lowered the saddle actually quite a bit. Um, I, I I hadn't measured it before, but I, I took a quick beat on it and 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 we I lowered it about an inch. Um, and here's where we're at now. So let's um, let's again let's dig into the numbers and I'll kind of show you where I'm at. First of all, I must say I felt quite a bit better on the bike, not surprisingly, um, having been off that much. But let's pause this, go back to our numerics table. So if we look first, let's go to our knee extension here. Um, we are at uh, about 30, about 33 degrees on that right side instead of 29. So better, still reaching a little bit on average. And we'll look at some of the gross number at some of the, the, um, the, the, um, graphs here and we'll be able to see that, but 40 degrees on the left, which is kind of right smack dab in the middle, still that seven degree difference. And that's interesting. That's, um, I'm going to touch on that in just a second here, but, uh, that's another thing that's not terribly uncommon. We'll get into that in a sec. Um, let's go into, let's go into the data. Let's go right to our, um, let's go into our foot measurement since we were just looking at that last before we did this second one. So here's where we're at now. You can, it can, you can definitely see how much, how much more uniform the movement is. I don't have that big step and that transition to that right foot, um, angle. Let me get this out of the way and let's zoom in just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so as we come down, now I definitely felt like um, I could sit a little further back um, on the saddle. And so that uh, it, overall, it just made me feel a little bit more comfortable on the bike. Uh, I just felt a little bit more secure. A little, and um, I don't know if I was actually, I don't think I was actually based on the measurements. I wasn't actually sitting that much further back. And I think it was just the stability of everything. Because if we look at some of the numbers here, of where my hips are relative to um, like relative to my wrist, for example, they're very similar to where they were. And that plays into our knee extension difference a little bit too. But if we look at our hip, but if we look at our hip height difference, we go back to that metric right here. You can see I'm positive 15 on the left this time, which 
you know, really isn't uh, to me. That's not surprising because the um, I kind of expected an over uh, a, an overcompensation, and this is something that's usually temporary. And it just tells me that we're pushing things and moving things around. Um, I've said this in videos. I've said this in videos before. The hips will adjust very quickly and sometimes very erratically. They're the they are very fast usually adapters, whereas our feet and our ankles are very slow adapters. So seeing this shift um, is not terribly surprising. <clears throat> But you can definitely see in the saddle, or here's the new saddle pressure is much better. I mean, it's th this is this again. The red line is indicative of the amount of pelvic motion, and this is more more likely where I'm usually at is this very tight uh, um, amount of movement here, very discreet sitting area on the saddle. So um, this is what I usually expect. And just to just for for frame of reference, here's the before on the left and the after before the saddle height change. So you can kind of see just how just a small change um, makes a makes a pretty drastic difference. And you'll notice that pressures here went up on, uh, on, on after. I'm not really concerned about that. This, you know, I, I, the reason it went up is I'm not sliding and moving all over the saddle. So this is much, I would much prefer to have a little bit more pressure on the seat and be a little bit more stable, to be honest. I mean, and this is not excessive pressure. So especially in the in this back portion of the saddle. So let's go back to so that knee extension difference. We still are looking at, like I said, if we look up here, about a, a, a seven degree difference. And that, again, that's something that's that's learned most of the time. I've probably been pedaling like this for a little bit. And like I said, I haven't ridden a whole bunch this winter, but um, this is the kind of thing where it, it, it shows us that our little imbalances can really creep up on us. And um, this is something I've probably been feeding it um, with my mechanics and it just ingrains it. So it'll take me probably a few weeks of riding now that I've got this position a little bit more dialed in, assuming I don't um, change it to, you know, to, to, to make some point in another video, hopefully. I, so what I'll do is I'm going to record this and we'll get it uh, so I can always go back to this setup because it's clearly better than I had it. Um, but it'll take a few weeks of me riding in this position in order to. Uh, but it'll take a few weeks of me riding in this position in order to, uh, in order to um, kind of absorb the changes and 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 get to a point where then these knee extension differences are you know continue to decrease here. So there you go. So I was close, but I wasn't that close by in going by feel. I was really surprised I was that far off on saddle height. I expected to be a lot closer than that. I mean, I lowered my saddle, ended up lowering it almost about an inch roughly, uh, which is a ton in, in, in a bike fit. So um, that was actually, like I said, that was pretty surprising. But lowering the saddle like that, it made a huge difference in the saddle pressure. As you can see from the, the before and the after here, this is the after, I mean, it's just drastically different. The amount of movement through my hips and everything uh, was significantly reduced and the pressure was much, much improved. Now I think doing this by feel is a challenge just because some of the symptoms get masked. My saddle height being off really made it difficult to feel whether my problem with the saddle fore aft or the maybe the handlebar distance, you know, the, the stem length, it made it really hard for me to figure out, you know, which direction I wanted to go. And only when I corrected the saddle height and got it into a, you know, a, a more a manageable range was I able to sort of feel and then, you know, use obviously more information to kind of come up with a, a better game plan for the some of the other adjustments. Now I was surprised that I didn't notice or I didn't feel the knee extension difference, but I wasn't too surprised actually. To me, this is actually proof or sort of reinforcement for the idea that our bodies can really slowly uh, get out of alignment to the point where we almost don't even notice it happens so slowly over time. And then you end up where I was with a seven or eight degree difference in knee extension uh, on the bike and it feels pretty normal. So I don't know, I think that this really showed that going by feel will get you to a certain point but if you can just add even a little bit of data, a little bit of objectivity to things, then I think you, you end up gaining quite a bit more. Just that little bit of information. Because I did keep this, the, the, using the infrared information, I kept it, like I mentioned, pretty basic. I kept it pretty simple. I didn't go into quite the depth that I normally would in a, in a full bike fit. 
uh, because I, I, I wanted to keep this somewhat, you know, uh, somewhat concise. But just again, just adding a little bit of data went a long way. And you can do this on your own. I have a free program you can go to on my website. I'll put a link down below. And it walks you through how to do a really basic video bike fit, including how to set up joint markers and how to measure with some free software, uh, joint angles and everything and uh, even gives you the ranges for, for the ankle, for the knee, and everything that, that you would need to kind of do some, some basic bike fitting. So check that out if you haven't. So that's all I have for this one. Thanks everyone. Comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.